20 minutes before the hour. A consumer alert to tell you about as we continue live from Constitution Plaza. If you have been shopping at Gap Kids lately, listen up. We have a recall to tell you about. The kids store is recalling more than 100,000 windbreakers. The company says the jackets have lead painted zippers. The lead can be toxic, toxic if ingested. The nylon jackets have a made in Russia label and come in many colors. Customers will receive a full refund. It's a survey the auto industry has been holding its breath for. The J.D. Power & Associates survey of new car and truck quality. Ford, Honda and Toyota came out on top with seven top ranked models each. While Toyota had six, General Motors five, Nissan with four and Chrysler and BMW with three each. J.D. Power listed the top three vehicles from compact car to luxury sport utility vehicles. The survey shows that U.S. car makers are closing the gap with their Asian and European competitors, but they still have a way to go. Here's what's making headlines this morning, everyone. A two-year-old's lifeless body was pulled from a swimming pool in New Canaan. The boy's mother is the nanny for the family that owns the pool. By the time she found her child, he wasn't breathing. She was still trying to revive him when paramedics arrived at the house. A rabies scare in Bolton, where three people will undergo a series of shots after being attacked by a fox. The fox first bit a little boy and his mother who rushed to his aid. It then attacked a man as he was entering his home. State police are trying to find the fox before it attacks again. And the fire in Meriden leaves at least one couple homeless. The three-family home on Wilcox Avenue was engulfed. No serious injuries, and the cause is under investigation. The Red Cross is helping those displaced find temporary housing. Time now is 542. There's good news this morning about that baby seal that became stranded on a boat ramp at a Norwich Park last May. Our marine biology editor Dan Kane was there for the magic moment yesterday as the little guy was released back into the ocean. As I came in, I saw the head pop up out of the water, and I went, oh, and I ran over there. Wrong Way's story started at the public boat launch in Norwich about a month ago when he was rescued by a city public works employee. The seal's major problem was merely that he was lost, although seals in rivers are becoming more and more common in Connecticut. We've had reports of seals in every river in Connecticut, Quinnipiac, the Housatonic, the Connecticut River, even the Farmington River had a seal one year, and of all things. So that's the record, I think. So the going up to Norwich is really not that big a deal. Every year we get reports of seals in Norwich. Wrongway did have some minor medical problems, which were treated at Mystic Aquarium, and then he was loaded onto a truck for the trip to Blue Shutter Beach in Charlestown, Rhode Island. Looks like Wrongway is taking his time. <laughs> Wouldn't you? You might think a seal would make a straight shot for the surf after four weeks in captivity, but today Wrongway was no way. Ever seen seals before? Uh, just at Mystic Aquarium. What? Yeah, when we take the kids. So this is the real McCoy? This is the real McCoy. It's very exciting. After a bit of prodding, Wrongway did eventually make his way down into the water, and he fooled around for a while, but then he turned around and tried to head back on shore. He wants to be in water. I know, but how come he doesn't just head out to sea? I don't know. You're not a seal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People wonder about, well, he's all by himself. Hey, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's swimming back and forth. I'm, I'm, that's, that's a good sign. It took wrong way a while to finally find the right way, but eventually he did turn east, and now he's either headed for Nova Scotia or Foxwoods. Now your forecast first with Joe Fury. Hi, good morning, and a very chilly morning out here in Constitution Plaza in downtown Hartford for the taste of Hartford. can remember years in the past standing out here and watching the sun come up and saying, oh my, is it going to get hot and humid in a hurry? Uh, well, today we're rooting on the sunshine because, boy, is it chilly out here this morning. Temperatures are down in the 40s. There's a bit of a breeze that puts the wind chill in the 30s. And, well, yes, uh, you have to uh, grab the jacket and sweater as you move on out this morning. Our forecast for us for today, uh, looking for inland locations just in the 60s. It is uh, April and in early June as the northern branch of the jet stream has really taken over now. And uh, so uh, with that wind going uh, today, uh, again, uh, going to feel a lot more like uh, uh, springtime and, and not summertime. Even though we're not officially in summer, it is the month of June, and these temperatures are, are way below normal. 
Uh, shoreline, uh, well, of course, with that, the more of a westerly flow off the land, you can always get the temperature a few degrees warmer at the shore. 70, uh, that would do it at best today, and that will be a struggle to do, and you wouldn't reach that until oh, uh, 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. 49 in Hartford this morning. The dew point is 38. There is a wind going about 3 miles an hour right now. Every once in a while, it picks up a little bit more. Uh, 42 Torrington, 47 Meriden, uh, 50 at Groton, New London this morning. 40 still around 50. However, some of you are in the 30s this morning. Uh, 37 at Waterbury Oxford Airport, for instance. Uh, so the, the bottom line with this morning, either it reads the 30s on the thermometer where the wind has died down, or it's in the 40s on your thermometer, but with the breeze, it feels like it's in the 30s. Uh, a very chilly morning for early June. You can see that the sky is generally clear. The cloud to shield is off to our south. And, uh, well, it's hard to support bright sun and blue skies all day long with this kind of weather situation, but we're going to at least have a mix of clouds and sun today. Notice all the moisture continues to stay to the south. Well, watch that band of moisture out there in the Midwest. Uh, that's the battle zone going on. The hot, humid air is to the south. The cool air is to the north. In between, uh, you've got uh, showers and thunderstorms. Most of the action looks like it's going to stay to our south right through the upcoming weekend. Hard to do this time of year to have the northern branch of the jet and cool air and dry conditions, but it looks like we may be doing that. So your forecast for today will look for mostly sunny, breezy, and cool conditions. Highs today will stay near 70, but most towns you're staying in the 60s all day long today. Partly cloudy in the 40s tonight. Could be a few 30s. Partly sunny in the 60s for tomorrow. Maybe a few more clouds around tomorrow. And we'll be optimistic and stay up near 70 uh, over the weekend with a mix of clouds and sunshine. Polly Curtis. Oh, okay. I, and who thought I'd be wearing a turtleneck in June, right? <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Joe. Okay, we want to get a check on the roads this morning. Mike Wallace, our time saver traffic report. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning, Curtis. Morning, Polly. We're in excellent shape to set up the Thursday morning ride. No unusual problems through the Hartford area in regards to accidents, breakdowns, or any other obstruction. Roadway light volume, delay free 9184 and Route 2, driving down along the shoreline. Same style ride. We're delay free on the pike from Brantford down to Bridgeport and 91 merging nicely with 95. With time saver traffic, I'm Mike Wallace, Eyewitness News this morning. Thanks a lot, Mike. 13 minutes before the hour, more disturbing reports surface about young people and violence in a local school. And scientists keep a close watch on Mount St. Helens. We'll have the latest on the rumblings from Washington State. Plus, we'll let you know how you size up with your weight as we get ready to pig out this morning. <laughs> you might be surprised, but before we do all of that, let's go ahead and look at the lottery numbers. Your midday three numbers, six, three, and six. Midday four, zero, four, two, zero. Your nightly numbers, five, four, and five. Connecticut play four, five, nine, nine, seven. Taking a look at Cash 5 this morning, 12, 13, 22, 32, and 33. And Mass Daily, 9505. Your Mass Mega Bucks, 5, 11, 26, 29, 33, and 38. And your Powerball number, 22, 25, 31, 35, 41. Your Powerball number, 38. Plaza, where the taste of Hartford gets underway later today, and talk about a timely study. As we get set to pig out during this festival, how fat is too fat? That story is topping our health. Do we really want to know? No, I, I do know. not. The National <laughs> Institutes of Health is revising weight guidelines yet again, and most people are not going to like them. Reporter Elizabeth Cohen explains. How fat do you have to be to be declared officially overweight? There are new proposed definitions of overweight from the National Institutes of Health, and they're stricter than ever and controversial. Under the old definition, a person who was 5 foot 4 and 155 pounds was considered overweight. Under the new definition, that weight drops to 145 pounds. And for someone 5 foot 10, the old guideline was 185 pounds. Now it's 175 pounds. Under these new guidelines, 25 million more Americans would be considered overweight. The National Institutes of Health is scheduled to announce these new weights later this month. CNN has obtained a copy of the final draft of their report. Some health experts are against the new guidelines. They say they're too strict and attach a stigma to people who really aren't that fat. For example, they say that under the new definitions, two athletes, Chipper Jones and Cal Ripken Jr., would be considered overweight. Elizabeth Cohen, CNN Atlanta. Also on the health beat this morning, older women and substance abuse. According to a study by Columbia University, an alarming number of women over the age of 59 are hooked on psychoactive prescription drugs and alcohol. The report also notes that most doctors don't recognize the symptoms of abuse. If you are pregnant and still smoking, doctors say you are asking for trouble. The latest evidence shows that nicotine can cause fetal death, prematurity, low birth weight, 
and sudden infant death syndrome. Researchers say animal studies show nicotine is even more damaging to the fetus than cocaine. Nicotine was going in and actually damaging the baby's brain during development, uh, causing loss of cells in exactly the areas that would compromise behavioral and learning uh, performance. Scientists say contrary to popular belief that drugs are most harmful to the fetus during the first trimester, nicotine does the most damage during the second and third trimester. A new once-a-day allergy drug will soon be available for children under six years old. The prescription antihistamine Zyrtec has won FDA approval. Zyrtec is designed for the treatment of seasonal and year-round allergies, as well as chronic itching and hives. We're told children as young as two can now take the drug. It's marketed by Pfizer of Groton. Well, we still got a lot to come this morning, a lot of food, <laughs> mouth-watering fun with our Nancy Abor and Mr. Fu coming up. Yeah, and how does Chinese food sound this early in the morning? Sounds good. I know, it sounds, sounds great to us. Yeah. Nancy and Mr. Food will be coming up with dim sum, along with shrimp cocktail with spicy mm. sauce, veggie, angel hair pasta with the folks from the Shangri-La restaurant. That's just ahead in our 6 o'clock hour. And time now is 5.53 on Connecticut's news station. Coming up, police arrest a second man in the home invasion murder of a Hartford man earlier this year. And find out what's ahead for ex-Spice Girl, Jerry Hollowell. She's coming up in our People in the News this morning. Plus, it's a birthday gift that will take your breath away. We're back with more from Constitution Plaza. Stay with us. Coming up, four minutes before the hour, Mount St. Helens is showing signs of life, but there is some cause for alarm. Scientists report an increase in the number of small earthquakes under the mountain, but they're not the type that trigger an eruption. One led to some steam venting. You'll remember Mount St. Helens' eruption in 1980 killed 57 people. Everyone wants to celebrate their birthday in style, but thousands of feet up in the air. Laura Lutz did just that yesterday. It was her 80th, 80th birthday gift from her family. She came down with a smooth landing, and from what we are told, she enjoyed her little airborne adventure, although she says she is not exactly sure she will make that leap again. Oh, bless her heart. You want to do once, this? Yeah, yeah, I've thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the boss is saying. No. leave it for you. Let's go ahead and check on the roadways again this morning. Yeah, Mike Wallace, you need to drive yourself on over here to the uh, Taste of Hartford this morning. Good morning. Yeah, but then who would keep an eye on traffic? Yeah, I guess so. You guys look all warm and snuggly out there. <laughs> Pretty good shape out here as far as the roads are concerned. If you want to head down, take an early peek at the uh, Taste of Hartford. Now's a good time to head out. No delays, no problems, no complaints. 9184 Route 2, light volume prevails. We are delay-free. As far as the shoreline is concerned, trip may be a little longer up to Hartford, but it's a good one. Turnpike delay-free, Branford Bridgeport, 91, ditto. In time I'm Saber Traffic. I'm Mike Wallace. I witnessed news this morning. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mike. It is three minutes before the hour on Connecticut's news station. Coming up at six is a toxic landfill poisoning the community around the state's largest university. See why the controversy is brewing. Also new at six, how human error has shut down a key source of power in Connecticut. And after a year of controversy, the State Board of Education issues guidelines for sex education in schools. And good morning, everyone. I'm Nancy Aborn, live on Constitution Plaza with none other than America's Mr. Food. You got it. And we've got something cooking up for you. It's called the Taste of Hartford. And ooh, it's so good. <laughs> Join us. So when don't I'm go away. This morning continues. <laughs>